It's June in San Francisco, and Patrick Willis is on his way to see his new $5 million home. Today, you know, I'm going over there for the first time. <laughs> but it's like waking up for Christmas, you know. It's, um, I don't know, I got, like, butterflies and all that. In the house I grew up in, um, you know, it was a roof over our heads, but at the same time, too, you know, when it rained, it, it poured, and that's, that was literal. The six foot one, 240 pound Willis is arguably the best linebacker in football. At 26 years old, he's made four Pro Bowls in four NFL seasons. He can be from point A to point B in a flash. He can startle players. You know, you see it in their eye. How in the heck did he get me? But Patrick Willis's success is grounded in something deeper, more complex, a childhood filled with disappointment and anger that forced him to grow up too fast. Well, he's a guy that has every reason to quit. He's a guy that has every reason to hate everybody. Greatness is not about the guy that has all the skill and the talent. Greatness is measured by the setbacks that you've had in life. Have you been able to fight through them and become stronger? Deep in the backwoods of Brewston, Tennessee, two hours east of Memphis, there was a double-wide trailer at the end of a dirt path, Patrick's childhood home. What I had is what they call country strength. It's from growing up in the country and just doing abnormal things like chopping wood. I didn't get running water until I was eight years old. So we literally had to use the bathroom and buckets at nighttime, put a um, board over it and whatnot. And next morning, had to take it out down in the woods and get rid of it. Patrick was four when his mother abandoned him and his three younger siblings. They lived with their father, Ernest, a part-time logger. I tried to teach them the way I was taught, you know. I let them know, try to let them know what right and wrong and try to learn them the right way. My dad wanted us to be together because he knew how, how, how important my family is and he knew how important we were to each other. In 1995, at age 10, Patrick was helping his father support the family. That summer, he began working full time in the cotton fields to help pay the bills. I'm like, here you go, Dad. Like, here goes some. I like, give him like, like sixty dollars of what I had, you know, or fifty dollars, something, but just something, you know. And he would come at me like, "My I get twenty dollars, the light bill do." But then I never know why. I would suddenly come home and the, the light's not on. He always was spending money on alcohol and, and drugs or whatnot. What kind of drugs was he doing? I, I, I don't know what type of drug it was. Like, specifically, I just know that whatever it was, it had a metal pipe and plastic wrapped around the end of the metal pipe. I drank me beer and stuff. I used to smoke a little marijuana back in the day, but I don't know more. But it wasn't no abuse and thing, you know, it wasn't no big thing. He would come out asking all paranoid and asking a thousand questions, and we like, like, man, come on, Pops, like, like, uh, but you know, but we didn't say nothing. We just kept our cool, act like we didn't know what was going on. But Patrick says there was more going on at home than just drug use. He just got really, really abusive. He had a tendency going too far. I mean, you can get a whooping, but it is a, it is a part when you overdo a whooping. <laughs> Getting hit with pots and pans turned into fists. Because our dad used to say, like, we ain't little no more, so he'll fight us. I, mean, I got a little switch, a belt or something, I was playing with my hand, you know, you know. But, you know, it wasn't no, wasn't no killing thing. It just something to make them, let them know what they done wrong, you know. So crazy abusive that I just started looking at him like, like a stranger. This is where you used to, to hang out and start learning your skills. All right, man, this right here, believe it or not, like, this right here is where the game of football all started for me. Like, I couldn't afford to play Pee Wee football. Down here, with his, with his pole is, right here, that was, that was one touchdown. Patrick immersed himself in sports. He became a star in baseball, basketball, 
and football at Brewston Central High School. I'd rather be playing sports than to be home. Like, any day, that was, like, my escape. And I just got to the point to where, as long as I don't feel, then I'm fine. Back home, with his father increasingly unreliable, Patrick found himself in a different role, head of the household. Patrick was there. He, like, he helped us make sure we got our homework done and stuff like that. We knew that if we didn't get our chores and stuff cleaned up, that it's going to be consequences. He's just like a father figure to us. On a spring day in 2001, during a family basketball game, Patrick, then 17, made a decision that would change his family forever. Our dad is so competitive, like, if we lost, if we was on his team, we got a whooping for it. It was the game-winning point when Patrick went up to make the shot. Patrick elbowed me, so, you know, I covered my mouth. And Patrick, he all happy because he just dunked on me. So I giggled, too, and our dad was like, it ain't funny. The next thing you know, I saw him like hitting me all in the face and the head. I'm like, this is it. This is the day that me and my dad are about to, like, fight because nobody's ever stood up to my dad. I didn't hit a hard, you know, I just, you know, you know, she, she tried, got mad and trying to fight, you know, and I, I just, I, yeah, but I whipped the butt. And then he got ready to grab my head again, and I ran, I grabbed his hand, i never forget, I grabbed his arm and it just stopped completely. And then what happened? Then he looked back at me and he was like, boy, if you ever get in between my business again, like this here, I'd kill you. That night, Patrick, his two brothers and sister decided to finally tell school counselors about the years of abuse. I felt like something crazy was only eventually happened. Like, nothing good was going to come out of us, like, staying there. I felt like it was my job to protect them. A week later, the Department of Children's Services sent police to the Willis home. You know, and I said, what's going on here? I said, you know, I cussing. You know, I asked what the hell, you know, I did. I said, what's, what's going on, you know? I said, and he said, well, we come to get your kids. I said, for what? I whooped him, but I ain't abused him. Ernest Willis was never charged with any crimes. Still, authorities planned to move his four children into separate foster homes across the state. Word reached Patrick's high school. Superintendent came down to my classroom in the hallway and he pulled me out of class and he wanted to know if my wife and I would be interested in taking all four kids in because they didn't want to split the kids up. I said, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, we can, we should, we can help them. <laughs> and of course, everybody at the time was like, you don't have a clue what you're doing. Four teenagers, you know, what are you thinking? In the summer of 2002, before his senior year of high school, Patrick, along with his younger brothers and sister, moved in with the Finleys. I felt like for the first time in my life, I could, I could be a kid. I could wake up, brush my teeth, and have hot water, and maybe possibly, like, have a girlfriend or something, because I wouldn't be ashamed to, like, bring them home. We'd give them an allowance for doing, you know, whatever little chores they had. I can remember Patrick. He would come to us and say, well, do you need any of this for, like, the light bill? And I was like, no, you know, that's your money. You know, you can keep it. You know, he didn't have to worry about basic need kind of things. I think he could concentrate on himself more and, and what he needed to do. As a high school senior, Patrick was nominated for the state's Mr. Football Award on both offense and defense a first for any athlete in Tennessee. In 2003, at the University of Mississippi, he started all 13 games as a freshman and became a two-time All-American, at times playing with a broken hand, sprained knee, sprained foot, and separated shoulder. Every time I saw him, he had a cast on his ankle, he had a cast on his forearm. <laughs> what, what's up with this guy? When I heard his story, I was like, wow, I'm impressed. We, we got to get this kid. The San Francisco 49ers selected Patrick Willis with the 11th pick in the 2007 draft. At 22 years old, Willis had almost everything he ever dreamed of, except for a relationship with his father. I would just tell him, I want to be able to have a relationship with you. I can help you. So you need money for lights and, and, and groceries or food or something, but you taking it and you spending it on drugs. He literally pulled out a pocket knife. He said, Patrick, you better get away from me. Ain't nobody, like, nobody doing nothing. Now, I told you I wasn't, I wasn't doing no drugs. He come through the front door and his eyes were just red, you know, and I knew he'd been crying. 
It is the only time I've ever seen him emotional or kind of broken spirited and upset ever. He wanted to help his dad so bad. And uh, I think he was emotional because he wanted his dad to help himself, you know? Sorry. Um, when you have a, a tough childhood, it makes the tough things very normal. You know that I've been through this, I can handle the rest. This is just a game. It's also a job, and Patrick works hard at it, just like he's worked hard at everything in his life. In each of his first four seasons with the 49ers, he's made at least 100 tackles. In May of 2010, he earned a five-year, $50 million contract extension. Last October, he bought his first house. I've been dreaming of getting a house like this since I was a kid. Welcome home. Patrick's interior decorator gave him his first tour. Right, I'm tapping myself see if it's, it's real right now. It's the place he now calls home. You have dining. Home for his family. This is mine. <laughs> this is all yours. It's all yours. Because he wants his siblings and foster parents to stay whenever they visit. For your parents. Wow. As for his father, there is only hope. I think what would mean a whole lot to Patrick if Daddy was to say, I'm going to go to rehab. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go get my life and stuff straight, and we're going to try this again. My relationship feel good with my hope. For him, I hope it is. For him, for me, it's still good. It's going to stay good right there all my life until I'm dead. I know that we all are not perfect, and, and that's understandable, but also we you too that, you know, a uh, man can change. And for what happened to all the kids, those days are, are behind me. Uh, now, it's all that matters to me.